25 as last week. Open your Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 7. It's going to be very brief. This is already after the church. <laughs> but we are good. Very brief. Maybe one of these chapters for you that are free for allowing me. All right. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Glory be to God. Matthew 7, we're going to read from verse 24 through 30. The faith of a godly mother or the attitude of a godly mother. And nobody said amen. amen. The faith of a godly mother or the, the attitude of a godly mother. It's a story that you're familiar with. Permit me to bring you back into this story this morning. I pray the Holy Spirit will minister to you as you're listening in Jesus' name. Amen. Mark 9 from 24. Mark 7 from 24. And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sino, and entered into a house and would have no man know it. But he could not behave. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children fall be filled. But it is meat, it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. Yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, go that way. The devil is gone out of thy daughter. That's verse, verse 30. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out and her daughter laid upon the bed. Amen. If I ask you further, we do not merit the grace to submit for the understanding of your word. But we hide ourselves under the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that are redeemed us from the cause of law whose mercy and grace have been extended to us all in our rebirth and brought up into your presence. We want to hear from you. We want to behold you. We want to feel you. With the writing of the faces of the scripture, we want you to interpret your word in our hearts this morning. That we can become a better person, a better mother, a better father, and a better shepherd. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The faith or the attitude of a godly mother. Mm -hmm. In the story we just read, we heard about a woman. So I would call her a Syro Phoenician woman. Mm -hmm. The Syro there is Syria. The Phoenician is a town, it's a name known. And there is one in Africa, so to distribute the one in Africa and the one in Asia, or in the Middle East, they have to call the Syrian Phoenician one, Syro Phoenician one. She heard that Christ has come into their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And she had a troubled child, a troubled daughter, troubled by the devil. And she went to Jesus Christ. He is the only one who is the solution. Mm -hmm. He is the solution. There are many options. Okay. <laughs> but he, in our mind, should believe Christ is the only way. The only way. So many of us, when we challenge this happen to us, we're looking for an easy way out. A quick fix. A microwave fix. And when someone is telling you, read the Bible, pray unto God, no, that is not what you want. You want a quick fix. A quick fix. Jesus Christ is the way, is the truth, and is the life. No one go unto the Father except through Him. He is the way to your destiny. He is the way to your accomplishments, your successes. Your breakthroughs, your desire goes in life is the only way. Any other 
that suggested way will lead into destruction. The Bible said there is a way that seems right to a man. They appear right, they look right, they feel right, but the end of it is destruction. To me, all you that have labor and are heavy than I Matthew 11 from 28 to 30. Say, Come, he said, He's beckoning to us, brother and sister, with what you going through, with what I'm going through, with all that we are going through. He's telling us on a daily basis through the word of, of God written in the Bible, Come unto me, don't look anywhere else. Come unto me, I'm the only way. Don't it tarry. Don't it seems to be delayed. Trust in me. Who are you trusting? Who am I talking to this morning? Who are you trusting? Your intellectual capacity? Your certificates? Who are you trusting? Your family background? Your name? Who are you trusting? Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. And, and, and look at it because it, it is all like our God to throw anybody out when they come unto him. It's all like him. But in this instance, and how the picture, that the, the, the picture we got, I took her out to say not to her. Huh? Why, should I, why should I hear your daughter? I'm only sent to the Jews, but that is it. That is what he was saying in the parable. That's what he was saying. Why should you a an outcast, a gentile? Why should you come to me? I'm not saying to you. It's forced to the Jews. That's what he was saying. That was that was saying in parable, in coded word. But look at the woman. Look at the love and the attitude of a godly mother. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who is what you will be, what you will be listening. The attitude of a godly mother. She divided the divide, divide, divide orders to us. And he said, Yes, Master. I'm not talking about the food for the dogs. First of all, she's likened to a dog. Are you sleeping? No, no. She's likened to a dog. And this is coming from the mouth of our Savior. I can't give the food that is meant for the children to dogs. Can you picture yourself being in the presence of God and that feeling is coming unto you? The feelings of unwanted, outcast, rejected. And then God can throw it to you and say, I can help you, but in this instance, I will not. First of all, understand this. She didn't come for breakthrough for herself. She didn't come for success for herself. She didn't come for financial blessing for herself. She didn't come for healing for herself. The attitude of a godly mother. She took the insult. She internalized the insult. She turned it around. She turned it around. And gave it back to Jesus Christ. I said, praise. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She took the insult from Jesus Christ. She, 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 she it up and turned it to praise. You insulted me, I will praise you. Amen. You rejected me, I will embrace you. Amen. You turn me down, I will look for you. Look at what you said. Uh, verse 28. See, and she answered and said to him, now he's talking to Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs under the table 
eat from the children's. You can understand that she's the only one who called, in the book of Mark, who called Jesus Christ Lord. That was not in me. A woman that had been insulted, that had done the insulted, that had done reduced to nothing, ridiculed. She took the insult because she was putting her mind on her daughter. For my daughter, I will do anything. For my son, I will do anything. For my family member, I will do anything. And that is what many of you are doing. Some of us are doing some jobs that ultimately you won't do. But when you look at the bills to be paid, When you look at the dependence on you, you defy all the odds. You defy all the odds. And you keep pressing. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter who see me. It doesn't matter what they think about me. As long as I don't steal, as long as I don't beg them, I'm moving forward. Any zero Phoenician woman in the house? Yes, sir. Any zero Phoenician father yes, in the house? Yes, yes. Your dependence, when it comes to their needs, they are careless of how you get it. That's, that's right. Can I say it louder? Yes, sir. Your dependence, being it your children or your parents, mm. once they are solely depending on you, they are careless of how you make it or what it is that makes something on the table, daddy. Send me money to cash up in, in Nigeria. They don't care how you make it here. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the attitude, the attitude is, you see, we, there is no that we all know that God loves us. God loves us. He loves you. And that love is so, so the love has expression through the attitude of God towards us, through the actions of God towards us. The love of God is not just, just a written love in the scripture. We find it everywhere we go. We see it, we feel it. It said for John 3 16, 17, for God loved us more than he does for us. This is the love has expression from his mind and action comes with it. He gave us. He's only begotten his son. He gave us. He's born in no. Okay. Let me pause there. We we'll come to the children now. For the children in the house. Hey, all the children in the house, lift up your hands. She drained in the house. How long have you called your mom and your dad and told them, I love you, dad, I love you, mom? Is it? I give you a, I'll give you an homework. I'll give you an assignment today. When you get home, when you get home, don't be intimidated of those words. Say it to your parents. Tell them, I love you, Jack. I love you, Mom. Nobody say amen to that. If you are intimidated, if you are shy, which you should not be, send them a text message. Get a card in um, Dollar Tree. One dollar card. 19, after, as well as 99 cents. Okay, go to 99 cents song. Get a card. And I'm mom, I love you. Mom, I love you. The children of a woman in three years of age who fell sick suddenly. And uh, her only surviving son was called upon to prepare his mind that you don't know maybe this will be your last time to see your mom. She flew them, he flew them, and went straight to the hospital. So the mother, she lost him to, to a crime. She said, Wow. She said, Mom, I love you. And the mother lost him to tears as well. I said, Son, you love me. 
So last week was your 63rd birthday. 63rd year birthday. See, but you have never used that word for it. In 63 years of your life, you have never opened your mouth today and tell me, I love you. Now. See, but now you say that. Don't wait until when your mom will be dying. Until when your mom, your dad will be dying. So you can express love to God. God loves you. The job you share with more than your parents, God give them to you. And whatever you have become comes through your parents. Okay, whatever you are now comes to your parents. Take your parents out of the picture, you are nobody. No matter how bad you think they are. Hello? No matter how bad you think your parents are, if you take them out of your mind, you are not in a system. Mommy and daddy's show, let me give you an assignment. When was the last time you looked straight to your children and told them you love them? They are tired of those corrections and nagging. They are tired. Don't make any gesture. I'm talking to everybody, including myself. It's not about this. This is this is self examination. I told I told Pastor Children, Pastor. I said, I have an auto writing book all about this issue. And I'm back when we're in, I'm still trying to God will help me. Not just in the African community. But we find out that we're quick to correct these children without training them. Mm -hmm. We want the best for them, but we're not training them. And once they make mistakes, we are quick to say to judge them. Yeah. Without training, what are we giving them? It is not too late, brother. It's a mommy and daddy's parents. It is not too late. No, no, no. Don't let them get love where there is no love. The love has that is not love. It's a pathway to destruction. Let them know that there is love in their homes, in their family, in their family members. No. Let them know. So, parents, I beg you. Don't wait until when you will be dying before you will say, I love you, son, I love you, daughter. No matter how bad you think they are, no matter how bad they are, you don't know what your word can do to them. When I was young, I was very strong. When I was young, I was very, very strong. Very, very tough of <laughs> So, and uh, if I agree with some street fights, some street fights, and they come to report me in the house, my dad will first ask me, who won? Yes, yes, now. Yeah, if that is what is known for me, then who won? Okay, then we're not correct. <laughs> the first thing is to move on. Yeah. If I'm defeated, you will say that that will be a rematch. Yes. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Very nice stuff. My brother was even worse most time ago. Most time ago. But this is the thing. And I will forget. My mother will call me outside. Talk to me. Everything you do, As soon as I come, if anybody offended me, I tell you, if I'm the one who offended, I will tell her, I will confess to her. I offended, but I beat him. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. So you see, the, those little words helps children. It helps them. 
Let your children feel the Lord. Let them feel that, yeah, you are their backbone. And they can trust you with anything. With anything. Now, younger ones who are becoming adult, please engage them, please. Talk to them. And I said it over and over. <laughs> we, in our relationship, we saw abuse. We saw it. I'm a man. Nobody abused me. I saw how children, young children, were abused by older men. And nobody ever said anything about it. And many of the adults now are abused, but they are not courageous enough to let their children know, listen, this was my mistake. Don't let him say repeat the sign. Since we are in that lane, let me rub, rub this through your mind. Mommy, you can engage your children, but male and female. And get them in the school around that is centered around domestic violence. It's real. Teach them. Proverbs 22 says, Train up a child in the way she go. Teach them while they were young. Domestic violence. There are some men that are abusers of grace. Teach your children. Nothing good come out of their mouth. You are too fat, you are too thin, you are too tall, you are too short. Everything. So men like that. That cloth is not good in you. Get another one, it's still not good because they don't want anyone to have you. They abuse out of grace. Getting married to someone who does not mean you have to become a punching bag. Let your children know. Don't let them go and find out by themselves. It will be an indictment on you. Train them, teach them. Once a man raises up their hand against you, run away. A man who verbally abuses you at all times. Run away from him. Even though he's the son of Donald Trump, run away. In fact, he Run away. If you have your sanity and you don't have money, you have everything. When you have money, you have no sanity, you have nothing. Money that you can't control. Fame that you can't control. Domestic violence. Domestic abuse. The family, the family where you raise up children and you run down your wife from money to even run down your husband from money to even. What do you think good children will pick up when they grow up? They will fight their own spouses as well. But that is what they are used to. They train their brothers and sisters. Don't shy away from this one. They say this one. I'm calling out to every one of us. Your children are too much, they're not too old for them to hear the truth from you. They're not too old. They don't understand the rigorous of fragile families. When they see their peers who is not much known with the with the with the slinkers that, that, that your own children are with, let them have respect for them. Let them understand there are some who are going through divorce in their relationship. And they might not be coming to let you know. Let your children know that they should be tolerant, they can tolerate others. There are some fragile families out there. The story of a, a, a doctor, a medical doctor, who, 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 whose wife was sick years ago. And one of his uh, kidney was bad. The doctor volunteered that his own kidney should be given to his wife. I went together, you sleeping on me? You gave me the mark at 12, it's just 12 10. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> and when 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 the <laughs> when the wife felt when the wife felt the marriage 
marriage is not working, he, she decided to opt out. And the guy said, okay, if you are going out, I need my, I need my kidney back. <laughs> She's a medical doctor. You would have thought this would be heard among illiterates, right? Medical doctor. They went to court. You know, why we were married, you were sick, I helped you to survive. Now you want to leave me, give me back my kidney. Fragile families. There are people who lost their parents in just the motor accident, gunshot, violence, drug, and things like that. Fragile family. Teach your children to absorb others who are not like them. So they teach them how to absorb them. They don't speak the same language with you, they don't have the same. Absorb them. Absorb them into your world. Teach them. Don't feel into stereotyping. They don't speak that you, they can't be like you. They can't, they can't add values to you. Who told you? Jesus was a Jew. He brought us into himself. Let them know about human trafficking. This is not just in Africa. Right here in Suffolk is happening. Human trafficking. In Nelson, South- it's happening. Human trafficking. And guess who are the victims? 11, 12 years age. Yes. Human trafficking. It's happening in London, in America, not in Africa, not in Asia. Teach your children. Train them. I went through a long series of teaching with Anna when she was younger because she was very important to all our friends. Everybody's our friend. And I, I, I let you, I let them know, please, please, there's a limit to this friendship of a thing. <laughs> it's training. No, I, I'm not putting her on spot. She's done God for her life. Yeah. But it's training. She never knew how she found it over the teacher. Teach them. It's not everybody that offer you a candy that love you. No, the no. candy could be poison, mm. and they take advantage of you. Mm-hmm. Not everybody that offer you a drink, you want, you don't mind it drinking in your campus that love you. No, they're looking inside your your panty. They're not just looking outside. And don't become a victim. Rape, rape, rape is. Thank you, Jesus. You are my family. You are all I have now. I don't know of tomorrow. But I believe I can tell you the way it is. A young lady, I, I, I said it in, in the night region. A young 21-year-old girl was friending a 49 going to 50-year-old man. A media mogul in Nigeria. A billionaire. And this lady was in a person first year in college. Okay. Where are they Okay, third year in college, befriended this young man. The man, of course, is married. Billionaire. And uh, they decided to, to, to have some time, nice time for themselves. Um, they rented a place that dug themselves up. And he was there. Look, look, look at the ratio 50 to 21. They were there, they locked themselves up. Food, drink, smoke, everything. The guy locked the door and kept the key. I began to abuse this young lady. They were boyfriend, girlfriend. But the lady could not take it. She wanted to come out. The guy had already locked the door. Emotionally, she was disturbed. Physically, she couldn't match up with this young man. And after the first one, the first one, the lady managed to escape to the kitchen, ran to the kitchen because the guy wanted to leave her on him again for the second time. And the guy pursued him to the kitchen. And uh, you know the story. You know how it will end. The lady picked up the knife. Stab the man. Stab the man. It's two man. Guy will not let go. Stab him in the neck. And the guy died. God forbid. As me, I don't. 
don't subscribe to killing of anyone because God said we should not kill nobody. But I wish I'm a lawyer and I will defend him. It's just self defense. Not that you won't be punished, but I will get out the mineral. I wish I am. Locking up a young, a young girl without her consent, forcing her, raping her. Lock the door, keep the key to yourself. You are the boss. You are the boss. Brothers and sisters, this is not about this. This was just happened last week. But I'm saying we should teach our children and train our children and tell them the truth. It started by. Okay, after the incident, the young lady went and we went to his ATM, his ATM and withdraw how much three hundred thousand or how many million, I don't know. And withdraw it. I don't know. Maybe maybe the lady we have to get some money from him. Mommy and daddy, when your children who are not working are coming home with pussy and pasta, she asked them, where did you get it from? <laughs> don't laugh. Ah. Pussy and pasta, to somebody who is not working. You say them to school, you are seeing them with new car, and you are clapping that God has answered your prayer. You are dead yes. as a parent. Yes. What God, which God is answering your prayer? Which God? The devil is using you, and he will take you to the grave. Untimely death. Rape. Tell them. Having sexual relations without your consent is rape. And it's not even having sexual. Somebody touch you inappropriately. Slap the person and call the cops. Don't call the cops because you, before you slap. Slap the person. Slap the person and call the cops. Amen. And let's see how, how, we, how we get you in. Somebody touch you inappropriately. Call it. Stab the person. Either your father or your mother touch you inappropriately. Stab them. And call the cops and let's see what will happen. Except the rest. Teach them. Please, I'm begging you. I don't know any of you are watching. Train your children. This is a wicked world. Parents violate their own children. Train your children. Stand on top of the top roof and, and say it loud. Train your children. One uncle, one brother, one nephew. Come closer to your children and they're violating them and you violate the person. <sighs> Tell everybody infertility. Tell everybody infertility. That you are a woman does not mean you will become a mother. Hello? That you are a woman does not automatically make you a mother. It is grace of God. It's the grace of God. Let them know, as the young as they, as, as young as they are, that this is the reality of life. The reality of the that is so they can't mess around. Some are only having opportunity to one child, and they messing up. They have they committed abortion. They destroyed the child, and now they, are, they, they, they no child is coming again. Then they say it's a witch. No witch. No wizard. Ignorant. I do not pray for lack of knowledge. Ignorant. Tell them to keep their tie until when the right man will come to their lives. Okay, no amen to that. All right. Okay. Child marriage. No, it's not prominent in this part of the world. But let your children know. In Africa, we have 13 children that are. Be trusted to, to, to 80 year old, 70 year old men. 13 year. Ah! What a wicked world. What does a 13 year old know? What does a 12 year old person who hide that boy up there? What do they know? Are you giving them money to marriage? To your sheep right now. Let them know that this is the reality. It's real. Train them, not just one time or one off. Let them have the picture and grow with it. Let them have the picture. And 
know the name. He exposed them to women in quality. Let them know about it. Train them, take vision. Take time to teach them about it. You can be an advocate without being a lawyer or a solicitor. You can be an advocate. Let us not make you a feminist or a teacher to stand for yourself. To stand for yourself. Sex selective abortion. Selective abortion. If it is a boy, it is good. If it is a girl, we don't want it. Sex selective abortion. It's called the good your shame. They are growing. They're going to get out of your face very soon and get out of your hand. They will go with what you have deposited in them. And when they get to that situation, they already they, they, to be for one that is to be for another. You already have the knowledge. You have the knowledge. You already have the knowledge. This one life to live. Let's try to live it and live it best. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of Jesus Christ. The lesson we learn here, I said before, is the action that follow the attitude of this woman. You see her attitude display. It's not about saving herself or saving her soul. It's about her own daughter who was in need of Christ's healing hand. She was disqualified because the Greek has nothing to do with the doing in her own time. And in her time, she was disqualified because women have, listen, women have no access to men when it comes to theological stops. Not even philosophical, philosophical stuff in those days. That's why Apostle Paul was trying to the judge to, to, and telling the, the women to keep quiet every time they are in church. <laughs> because in their days, you don't, you don't engage in religious matters with women. So she was disqualified in every area. But thank God that the Spirit of God was upon her. Even though she was an outcast, a Greek, a, 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 Greek, a Greek woman, a Syrophoenician woman, the Spirit of God was upon her. I will see that that display of humility. That's what I do. I don't know what you believe in God for. Maybe for your children, maybe not, maybe for yourself, maybe for your career. But when the old world are turning their back, when the old city seems as if it is, it is, it is, please keep pressing. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. God is with you. God is with us as long as you tarry in the presence of God. Listen, God does not so lay. He, he does not say no. Though it may tarry. In other words, the answer to your prayer might be delayed. God said, I know the thought I have towards you. Before the Syrophoenician woman came to Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ already knew what would happen. My name is God. He knew. But her faith was placed into test. God did not tempt, tempt her. Jesus Christ did not tempt her. God does not tempt us, but our faith, our faith will be tested. Yes. Have you been tested? Have your faith been tested? Are you going through a test of faith and you are thinking this is the end? Are we together? Yes, are we together? Yes. Yeah. Is there anything you believe in God for that you are thinking, oh, all hope is lost? God is not going to do it. God cannot do it. God will not do it. I want you to stand on your feet. Let's change. There is nothing God will not do. Amen. There is nothing God cannot do. Amen. And there is nothing that he will not do for you. Amen. Only believe. Only believe. Have, have, have a good attitude, a positive attitude. From this day forward, have a good attitude towards your petitions, towards your prayer requests, your needs from God. Have a good attitude. Stop complaining. Stop complaining. 
has a good attitude. He is God. You, need, you are the one who is in need of something. If he doesn't do it, what will you do to start with? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. So why do to surrender unto him? And instead of complaining, God keep thanking him that, Lord, I know you have already done it. I know you have already done it. I know you have already done it. I want to open your mouth this morning and just change your expression of gratitude. Change it to God. Change it. Change it. Change it. Change it. Change it. Tell him you are more than grateful for all that the Lord has blessed you with. Thank you for the little we have been able to cover this morning. Thank you for the little word that you have heard. Thank you for the seed of the word of life that God has sown into your heart this morning. Thank God that, Lord, I know you are in control of my life. Thank you for reaffirming that you are with me. My children will not go astray. Thank God for the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding that has bestowed upon you to be a good mother, a good father. Thank God for your life as children and for the family that God has given unto you. Thank God that you know the best is coming your way. It does not matter what is going on in your life or in your family, in the life of your children or your husband or wife. Thank God because you know with God all things are possible. That is appointed time for all things. That at the appointed time of God, God himself will turn around the situation in your life. Thank God this morning. Thank God. Maybe you are giving up on your children, you are giving up on your husband or your marriage or your family or your wife. Thank God that God who has brought you this one will not forsake you. By his grace you carry those children for nine months. By his grace you have nurtured them, watched over them. You have invested so much on them. At this point in your life, thank God that Lord you will not allow all my investment to go down the drain. It will not go in vain, Lord. But you cause my children to, be, to stand out there. You will cause them to fulfill their destiny in you. You will bring them closer unto you and you will be their Lord and their God. It does not matter who is raising them. It does not matter who has raised them. But Lord, I deposit your word in the life of my children. As the word says in Proverbs 9 verse 10, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. I plant your fear in the heart of my children, wherever they are, wherever they are going, wherever they are being. Let your fear guide them. Let your fear train them. Let your fear be upon them. Redirect their destiny, redirect their cause. Bring them closer unto you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. The Serafina woman waited. And at the end, you said, Thy feet. We pray that Lord faith be activated in our lives. In the name of Jesus. The faith that turned impossibility to possibility. We pray that faith manifest in our homes this morning. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We bless you. We worship you. We adore you. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen and amen. for the father or the mother. 